Hello. Have you heard? Don't wash your hair. There are harmful chemicals right in your shampoo. Don't wash your body. The soap may cause cancer. Don't use lipstick either. It's, well, it's full of lead. Scared? Is there reason to be? Is this even true? Let's look at the big picture so you can decide for yourself. Pressure groups are constantly telling us that we may be at risk from carcinogens, mutagens, or reproductive toxins in the beauty products we use every day. Government agencies tell us that it's safe to use beauty products, and all you want to be is clean, smell nice, and look good. Fact or fiction? What should you believe? Personal care products are safe, provided they are used as intended. This is fact. The law in Canada, the European Union, the United States, and most other jurisdictions empowers government regulators to take whatever action is necessary to ensure that products are safe. As a result, the products that are on the market today from legally compliant companies are safe products. Some pressure groups have identified certain cosmetic products that they say may contain known or suspected toxins. They also say that they are a risk to consumers. Yet, at the same time, government regulators inform us that these products are safe. So, who should you believe? Well, it all boils down to the safety or risk equation. In a nutshell, the safety or risk of anything we are exposed to in life basically comes down to two equally important factors, hazard and exposure. Hazard is the inherent nature of something to cause harm. Exposure is how and how much we come into contact with that hazard. Together, they determine the likelihood of potential harm. In other words, we need to consider both hazard and exposure to really understand the risk to our safety. When pressure groups warn us that there are toxins in a product we use and that we are therefore at risk, what they are really talking about is just the hazard part of the safety equation. They are essentially ignoring the importance of exposure. Well, let's be cautious. Let's have no exposure to these substances at all. That will certainly keep us safe. But dismissing the exposure part of the safety equation is not practical and does not tell us what we really need to know. To illustrate the importance of exposure, let's look at an example we all know well, fire. Fire can be very dangerous, but we also know that it can keep us warm and cook our food. The inherent danger of fire to burn us is, of course, the hazard. The issue of whether fire is a safety risk depends on our exposure to that fire. A fire burning in the fireplace or wood stove keeping us warm is a very little risk. Letting a match while standing in a pool of gasoline is entirely different matter. Now that you get the two parts of the safety equation, here is an example of how it works in products we use. Several pressure groups warn parents not to use baby shampoos because of the presence of minute amounts of 1,4-dioxane, which may be a carcinogen. 1,4-dioxane is an unavoidable byproduct of the manufacturing process. Health Canada looked at these trace amounts and concluded that you would have to wash your baby's hair 620 times a day, every day, to be exposed to an amount that would be a concern to your baby's health. Certain pressure groups have also warned about tiny trace amounts of lead that may be found in lipstick, less than 10 parts per million. Health Canada looked at the same concern, and what did they conclude? You would have to eat not one, not two, but over five tubes of lipstick a day to get anywhere even near near a level of concern. People don't eat lipstick, at least not intentionally, and certainly whatever little amount they ingest is far below five tubes a day. So again, what is exposure really about? Exposure is about context, and without context, how can any of us properly assess the real risk to our health and safety? So, the next time you hear some scary half-truths about the personal care products you use, don't be scared. Take a moment and ask yourself if you've really been given both sides of the safety or risk equation. Because when you are given all the facts, there really is nothing to be scared about. For more information, please visit www.cctfa.ca, www.cosmeticsinfo.org. Brought to you by the Canadian Cosmetic Toiletry and Fragrance Association, CCTFA. Produced by Cartilage. <laughs>